and welcome back to our continuing series on World War II. On the last video, we were talking about uh, Nazi Germany and Italy during the 30s and the appeasement issue that was going on there. Uh, what we're going to do today is we're going to talk about the two essentially inciting incidents or previews to World War II. And the first of those is the Spanish Civil War. Now, in uh, Spain, what was going on at the time, there was, there was an issue between the, uh, the Republican forces and a, a, a fascist force similar to Mussolini, uh, headed by this guy right here, uh, Francisco Franco. Uh, and what happened was is that King Alfonso the uh, 13th who was uh, previously the king of Spain abdicated the throne in 1931 and what happened was is uh, Manuel Azana led by Spain or led Spain into the second Spanish Republic and here is Manuel Azana right here as he was a uh, famous politician at the time uh, for the re for the for the republican forces and what happened was the nationalists led by uh, Francisco Franco, and, and there were many other generals that went along with Francisco Franco. They received military assistance from uh, Germany and Italy as well. So the national, nationalist forces were actually supported by the fascist regimes. Uh, Manuel Azana, the Republicans, were actually assisted by uh, Portugal, the neighbor here. So we were looking at a map of Spain down here. Portugal here was giving some assistance to the Republicans, and the Soviet Union was also giving some assistance to the Republicans because at the time, you know, the Republicans essentially are just – this is talking about the form of government. It's a republic. So Republicans, of course, support um, you know, uh, uh, leaders that are, that are elected into a legislature and they were, and you know, the Soviet Union and and Spain had a lot of common interests. They were both socialists, um, essentially in their in their paradigm and ideologies. Um, and and a lot of the issue occurred with this uh, with this war because of the support actually of Germany and Italy. So uh, you know, these guys up here, Hitler and Mussolini. And that was seen as a particular issue, and and here is here is actually the this is a, the famous bombing raid of the Luftwaffe on Guernica, which was a, uh, a Spanish city that was being controlled by the the Republican forces, and the Luftwaffe uh, essentially destroyed the city, bombed it, burned it to the ground on uh, April twenty seventh, and this is actually a. a painting by Pablo Picasso that's called Guernica and it's supposed to represent the the death and destruction of of the the massacre that happened there so so the Spanish Civil War was a, a really major issue with uh, the, the world at the time these, these are essentially you know, belligerent nations intervening on the side of uh, essentially fascists and here we can see a map of the war and its progression. So here it's it's actually a Spanish map, which is pretty cool. So the uh, Nacionales, those are the nationals, and the Republicanos, those are the forces led by Azana. Um, so this is it in July 1936. You see the, the the nationalists have a lot of the northern region, while the South has a lot of the uh, it's capital Madrid and a lot of uh, Granada and a lot of these more southern areas but then the tide turns so quickly so in, in march 1996 or 19 uh the nationalist forces have conquered much of the western area near portugal and then uh it kind of just goes downhill from there in february of 9 1939 madrid and most of the southeastern part of spain is essentially surrounded so this proved an interesting um, preview, and many consider this a preview of the war itself, because a lot of the same tactics that are used by Hitler and Mussolini, they, they essentially used in, in Spain to, to conquer cities very quickly. And uh, the, the forces themselves, actually, here are, some, here are some Republican soldiers, actually. So they're using these, um, they might be Enfield rifles but they're they're essentially um bolt action single loaded and of course you know 
the Germans at the time had a lot of submachine guns and things like that. And not to say that the nationalists or the, I mean, the Republicans didn't have those things either, but the, the help from Germany and Italy sure did, sure did <laughs> decide that one. And, and now what we're going to do is move on. It's just called the Sino-Japanese War. So now, now we're thinking about the other side of the world and in China and Japan. I'll actually uh, zoom in on a map. So here, this is uh, J J Japan's invasion of Manchuria in 1931. So, so before this time period, uh, Japan, of course, has been changed from a democracy to uh, essentially a, an, an emperor, uh, an empire they've started to create. And you see ja Jap Japan and Korea have kind of been part of the or to take it over as part of the uh, Japanese Empire. And in 1931, Japan actually invades Manchuria, which is this region up here, which is near China. If it's actually a region of China today and also into the USSR. So they invaded the Soviet Union. And this was in response, of course, to a lot of things. There was a, a, a the Great Depression did cause an economic turndown in Japan and to a, avoid the issue of uh, slugging or slowing economy, they decided to, you know, to take something. <laughs> Not necessarily the best mindset, but they did definitely try it. Anyway, so that's a huge issue. So as a repercussion, Japan decides they need more military spending. And Emperor Hirohito claims that uh, Hikako Ichiu as the divine right of the emperor to unite and rule the world. So a lot of the same things you see with... with um, with Hitler and then the and Italy and this idea that there's only one ruler that can control the whole thing and who's to say what would happen if all those if the Axis won and Japan and Germany and Italy had to fight it out for themselves who would know what what crazy world I bet it would be a lot like 1984 but I digress um, so it started by the Manchurian incident in 1931 Emperor Tojo and the Imperial Army attack Manchuria. Uh, Japan actually will resign from the League of Nations in 1933. Uh, Japan slaughters hundreds of thousands of civilians in the conquest of Manchuria, as well as a lot of the other areas in um, in Asia, and we'll show that too. And that, that kind of climax, that uh, this is the Battle of Nanking here in 1937, and uh, a massive massacre. You see uh, the Japanese using several different types of of armor, uh, two, two different types of tanks here. Look how radically different. Uh, this tank, of course, is a German-supplied Panzer, and the and the Japanese forces are standing on it as one of theirs. And these are Japanese-made tanks. So uh, what happened was is when uh, Japan actually engages the Soviet forces in Manchuria, the the Japanese army will sign a neutrality pact with the Soviets in 1941, basically ending uh, that that conflict, that theater over there. But what happens is that Jap the Japanese occupation stays in much of Manchuria and parts of China as well. And think about it at the time, China is also going through a massive civil war. Remember that civil war between Mao Zedong and Chiang Kai-shek? <laughs> Well, that was going on right now, and it was a huge issue because the Japanese would would continually try to take out parts of China, and China would have to stop its civil war. But the funny thing about that was is the Chiang Kai-shek, the, the Republican forces there, were didn't really want to attack the Japanese. They were trying to take as much ground as possible. So that was that's a little funny thing that was going on over there as well. Um, and uh, just, just very interesting stuff. You can't really make this up. Um, anyway, the, the empire is going to spread south and east and west, and it's going to cover a lot of the, the, the Pacific. See, we could take a look. I'll go to the key up here. So this is the, the Japanese empire in 1870. Uh, this is this the acquisitions that were made in, in 1932, this big pink area, Korea and Manchuria. And then you can see further and further down as, as it gets darker and darker, uh, the further extent of the Japanese control. So it gets as far as uh, Inner Mongolia uh, down here, as well as Hong Kong. And that was earlier. And then and later on when the uh, Nazi Germany invades France and takes them over that you actually will see uh, French Indochina, which is uh, 
Laos and Vietnam and Thailand and Burma, all these areas will actually fall under Japanese rule, which was was p particularly brutal depending on uh, who you were. I, they might have been more brutal towards Americans or, or foreigners, but in, in general, it was a, f a fairly brutal um, tutelage, especially here in, in China as well. So the, this really in, incited a, a, a major incident <laughs> <laughs> is when uh, during the middle of this war in, in, in 1941, the United States is actually going to cut off oil reserves to, to Japan. And, and Japan's leading importer of oil or who they got their oil from was, was the United States. So kind of a little preview there as well of some of the implications the Sino-Japanese War had on the, the origins of uh, World War II. Um, that's the origins there, and we'll see you in the next video.